watched Hocus Pocus 2 last night. There's a two. There's a two. Don't tell me you haven't fucking heard of this. I've barely watched one. You're on you Twitter though. It's everywhere on Twitter. No, not on my Twitter. Anyway, did you see the first one? No. Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, then this is going to... Cause, right, did you watch the Brilliant Teenage Witch? Yeah. Okay. Ob- so obviously. I was thinking this last night and I was like, I wonder am I the only one? Did you ever... <laughs> Do you ever sit there and point to something and like try and see do you have powers? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. <laughs> Sitting there pointing at something, wanting it to move, like you had to give it a go. Like, yeah, all your might. I was like, I'm, am I the only one that thinks of that? And another thing, my neighbour said to me, because he did the Euro Millions, and of course he was fucking concerned, like, convinced he was going to win. And he was like, do you ever think when you were younger, you know, like when you're just in your fantasy life, and you live in a semi-D or whatever, and you're like, wouldn't it be great if the neighbours, like, moved out and I like, could buy their house and knock all the walls through? <laughs> did As you ever think the one that? place that you're going to stay yeah. is where you fucking grew up, like... You're like, no, this place is perfect. But we actually. were talking about this yesterday in work, and we were like, what if you won the Euro Millions? I suddenly came into millions, and they were talking about, like, oh, I'd buy, you know, a Porsche and, you know, all this sort of thing. Mm. And I was like, yeah, but the billionaires themselves actually don't look like billionaires. Like, they walk around, they walk in, around in, like, ganky t shirt and jeans. Now, the t shirts and jeans could cost 900 quid each, more even. But they're still, I was like, if I won the Euro Millions, I'd buy a van. Go around in a van, transit, from me no. from shopping. And nobody would suspect that I won the Euro Millions. They wouldn't be scrounging off me. Yeah, but you could say anything. I always think this. Like, if you won the Euro Millions, number one, I would never fucking tell a soul. Oh, I think you're... No, Euro Millions, you can keep it a secret, can't you? There's some places Everyone, where you have to. I think in America, that's it. Oh, my God. I think, God in, you I think in America, you have to... No, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway. Well, that's a shit one for America, because they don't even get it all in one go. I know, they get. They have to get taxed on it, too. They get taxed on it, and they get, like, With what, the it's a 10 thing. grand a month or something? Like, don't tell the government. Oh, my They'll God. fucking... I don't think... Like, w- like, oh. Would they have a, a choice, though? They, the lotto are probably in, and they have so many different lottos as well, like, it's not national. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong about the... No, actually, I think you can stay anonymous in America. I must look it up, because there's... I, I don't see the benefit in ever going public. I don't understand it. I don't no. know why people do it. It's really fucking weird to me. Yeah, I know. It's like, why would you ever yeah. tell anyone? Like, what you would do is you would do very small changes in the first year. You'd fuck off on a holiday, first of all. 100%. Do you know Same for ages. Same for fucking... We're going to Bali for six you know, weeks. You say that you won, like... You could say that you won a million without people being, like... Or you could say that you inherited money, because nobody's going to ask you for your dead relatives money like yeah or you could say that you went on mm, people are fucking weird yeah you could say you could say a couple of things i'm always like i i think about this as if it's definitely gonna happen it's absolutely not but as in you'd say you won like maybe five million right because mm. that's enough for people that's to be like look great at you amount look at you now fucking jesus christ whatever it's yeah. enough to like give your friends some to your yeah. family and your friends, so without them being like, I'd like more, please. But then you have to think about gift and tax as well. You can yeah, w- but you there's can ways that you can, um, you can get, you can get, you can hire Al McGee, like he'll figure it yeah, out for you. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to do this yourself. You're not going to raw dog it. Don't be, our accountant listens to this, so don't be saying too much. Do you know what I mean? she get on to us. Now, Carla, you can't be doing that. <laughs> 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 Carla. <laughs> Oops, I got stuck again. No, you can't do that. I can just imagine her face. <laughs> Listening to this scene, like, no. Oh, here they fucking yeah. go again. Yeah. The <laughs> nope, can't do that. I'm like, oh. Shit. Don't worry, fam. We'd never do that without asking you for <laughs> 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 oh, sake. <laughs> she uh, says she'd love to box the two of us around. Anyway. Um, no, but I think that there's a way of being like, like, if you got five, you'd be able to give everyone some. Mm hmm. And without people being like, give me more, no? Because you'd be able to get like a nice gaff, few nice holidays, and then you'd be like, I just invested the rest, and that's how I'm living so lavishly. Yes. And then people wouldn't be at you, because you'd be like, my money's all tied up, I'm sorry. I've done my donations, fuck off, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Like you'd do your little, a bit for you, a bit for you, a bit for you, and kind of move it around, around the houses. Yeah. You know, what would you get me? I would definitely buy a house. What would you get me? I said I would definitely buy you You'd a house. You'd buy me a house? Yeah. 
That is very generous. Thank you so much. I no, <laughs> but I think all my mates now because most of my mates are in the same position. Yeah, like, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just like just give them a fucking handout because I'm t- trying to think like if my mates won the like what would change millions. their lives? A house, yeah. yeah, exactly. The one thing that the you could one do, thing. yeah, mortgage free. Yeah, there you go for you and your little family. You're set now. You're welcome. But I think what, you're welcome. But then I start getting real technical about it when I'm thinking about it. I'm just like, but then would the house have to be in my name? Because if I gave it to them, they'd have to pay the tax I always on the gift. About that too, yeah. I always go too far with it. Who pays the bills? <laughs> the <laughs> law of attraction says you can't be thinking about the technicalities. Just don't think, just do. I'm like, but if I, it would have to be a certain size. Because if the bills I mean, are too high, then it would be, I'm like in my head. I'm like, no, no, no. Get it retrofitted think, for them. Give them panels and all, you know, like the solar panels. Then I'm like, does the house stay in my name? And then eventually there's a thing, but then they're going to have to pay inheritance tax and all this other kind of crack. And you're like, what does that, what happens? And then the house is in my name. And then, <laughs> then does a rift form because they're just like, we're living here. In we're your on house. edge. It's we're not really yeah. in your, my, our own it's house. Mine was not mine, still yours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. Kind of yeah, like. absolutely. <laughs> Unless you like do that and then pay the inheritance tax for them too. But then you're like, where's your budget? What's going on? I know, yeah. I know it's a bit of a shit. And then you have to give limits, and it's, oh, it would just. Be... And then do you whittle it down to the friends who have actually put the effort in for saving for a gaff, and then the ones who haven't bothered, just like, do you deserve a gaff? <laughs> Are you just getting a gaff for no reason? Am I giving you a gaff and you can't afford the bills? Am I making your life worse? Well, like oh, not it, not everyone will get a gaff. Do you know? Like some people will get. I have a small group of friends. That's this is you know. Everyone will get a gaff. In your eyes, good few of them. Yeah, good few of them. I get gaffs. This is, we're talking euro millions now. If I was winning five million, not all my mates are getting gaffes. No, 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 no. They're getting they get a holiday. Out. Yeah, they're getting an idea. <laughs> they're getting uh, put they're it on Eddie the tab. Rockets yeah. for free. Okay. Getting an Eddie Rockets <laughs> for free. Eddie Rockets for a year for you. And for that's you, it. and that's yeah. it. I got you a gift card. God bless. <laughs> Go for a gossip with Eddie Rockets. You know yeah. yourself. Look, it's tough times. Yeah. You gotta get out there. I just thought it was funny when he said, oh, "I'm gonna win the euro millions, and we'll move out of this house, and you can have this." And you can knock the wall through instead of giving me money. And I was like, oh my God, that's, you're like the first person who's ever said it to me face to face. Something that I always think about. <clears throat> Buying next door's gaff and knocking it through. Be a really? like, gaff. You're so sound. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it will be very good. Knocking the wall back yeah, yeah. Uh, in the back garden. Massive the only, back garden. It would be very, like I always think as well, I'd want my dad to have my house. Like the, like my, I'd want my dad to stay in the house that he's in. Yeah, I know. But then it's like, are you really going to leave him? Like you're a fucking millionaire. Like yeah, are you really going to leave him? Well, I mean, like, it's big I, enough, it's perfect. I'm kind of thinking with your situation, that's nearly f- fair enough. Because of the location, it's like, it'd be bad of me to leave Sheila where she is. Do you know what I mean? Where <laughs> you leave Ray where he is, it's kind of grand. Do you know what I mean? Because if I wanted a lot, I'd probably buy a gap where Ray lives. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of fine. She's so it's actually okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, bad out, Sheila. Fuck's sake, poor Sheila. Oh, yeah. fuck's no, sake. but I'd love to. You ever think about it? You're like, I just do. I do so many things. Yeah. Like, they, what's a lot of money nowadays, though? I know, yeah. I feel like I feel like the world is never I enough because of the inflation. I know, that's it. I, that's why I'm saying five million, I think, is a, is a great amount because it's enough to play with, but it doesn't. It, of course, it's life changing, but not enough to fuck your life up, I don't exactly. think. Exactly. Yeah, you know? it's enough to kind of be like you have to be clever with your decisions. You yeah. can't go out and go absolutely, you can't blow it all in one absolutely shot. insane. Yeah, you can do a lot and you can change your life and a lot of your family's life. Like a million, you're like, sure, that'd be ah, that'd be gone a second. You're like, that's a gaff and a, like a couple of bits and bobs, and you're. I know. That's a gaff doing and doing the gaff up, doing it up. Yeah. yeah, doing a few renovations, exactly. double height extension and all that. Whereas if you got five, you're like a million to invest. A million to this, a million to that, mm-hmm. a million okay. here, a million there. You could hire an, a financial advisor and stuff. Oh, McGee, that oh. works for me. Uh, <laughs> or ask Paul. Ask Paul also works for me. He's my other man. He's two lads there. I've got them both. Do you have a choice. Yeah, I have a choice because <laughs> I have lots of money. Exactly. <laughs> so you did it. You killed Kilio. Jen, what the fuck? This goes without saying. It's like no disrespect to the dead, obviously. A legend has passed away this week, but on Patreon, we, it was the we were after recording a, a podcast, and it came out on the fourteenth of August. And on, on that particular day, I think Izzy Miyaki was after passing away, and H was after being found in the car, and there was like a bit of a question mark over whether she was going to make it. She died Who? a couple of days later. Remember, remember, I was telling you Ellen's ex. 
Let me take your one. That had happened, but I think on Patreon, I had said something. I think it was her. No, somebody else passed away in the Patreon episode. And for six or a month, you can get an extra episode every Monday. <laughs> I love that segment. And then you'll get a little extra with, seg a, there. With, with a friend at the end of the, the month on Pop Country Bits. But on, in that, I was like, at the start of it, I was like, right, somebody else is going to have to pass away. It was like, comes in trees or something. Well, I don't know why I said it. But it was the one that we released on the 15th of August. Then I was like, who's your predictions? I picked David Attenborough. I think he's a short bit because of his age. Yeah, and that, I thought it was a cop-out for you. Yeah, it is a cop-out for me. Yeah, yeah. It absolutely is. I'm playing it safe. When Once he pass away, passes away, I don't know who I'm going to say. But you said Coolio. Yeah. And you even put it in there. You were like, no, I don't think by the end of the day. I have a feeling by the end of the year, which is weird because it just came to me and he's young. Yeah. And yeah, he fucking passed away, don't we? So I was talking to Lynn. So oh was, yeah because yeah, I had to I was just like I need answers because I also did it to Betty White which was more of an obvious it. one she was a short her age well, yeah. yeah but it was within a week I think do you remember something had or yeah or somebody like, had mentioned it to us within a week I forgot you said this I was this. like whoopsie yeah because I forgot you said this because um, it was the listeners who were texting yeah. on, uh, like, sending messages into the DMs. So it was about seven DMs in quick succession going, Carly, yeah. you're after killing Coolio. Like, what the yeah. fuck? And I was going, what are these talking about? Fair play to one of our Patreons. She was like... She knew the episode. She knew the Love episode because she was like, it was the day that loads of them were after dying. Okay. And this is why and you said knew. it. And she knew which one it was. It was the... The episode is called The Alleging of Dan Schneider. And uh, she was like, about one minute in, listen to it. It's fucking freaky. And that's where you said it. Madness. Fucking madness. What's going on? How did you kill him? So this, because I was chatting with Lynn about it. So Lynn, Lynn Mack is a psychic. We've had her on the podcast before. Very good episode. We've had her on the Patreon and, and, the, and the main. So if you're, if you're either, she's there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did just, she wrote to me being like, steal my job, why don't you? And I, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, and I was like, whoops. Um, but I did say this because I was like, I don't know why, but it was like, it just was like, it's Coolio. It, it, it's Coolio. And so you could have she said, given him a ring, like. I know. But she said, like, when, pe- when people pass, it's kind of generally set out around eight weeks in advance. Really? So she but, was like, she was like, now, you know, you're intuitive. You've always been intuitive. I'm like, I know, Lynn. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, no, you know, right. you I was like, oh, I'm very intuitive. But, um. I'm a cancer. But <laughs> I'm a cancer, guys. Guys, I'm a cancer. <laughs> but uh, I, I do that all the time just to annoy you. But yeah, so she was like, it was probably like just it, it tapping in. She was like, but I think there's something there for you. And I was like, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. So will we do a seance around Halloween then? You? No, because I think it's just, it's too sporadic and it's too random and it's never good, Jen. We manifest a lot of da- bad shit over It's there. really fucking weird, ob- obscure, celebrity mm. strangeness. Mm-hmm. Like really, now I will say one of our other patron listeners, Sandra, do you remember she said at the start of the year, you guys need to do a prediction list and go through it? Yeah, and we said we would and we've only done a couple. But this other... We didn't take notes though. But, but it was mad because there's this girl on TikTok, I wish I could find her, but she did a prediction list. Mm. Of all, and I'm not joking. It's really detailed. It's like two notes apps right. of all the things that are going to happen. But it's again really obscure things, mm-hmm. and it's like goes through it, and it's like I think I think Adam Levine might have even been on it. Fuck off! And it's all like these people are going to get divorced. This person's going to have a baby. This it's like Tristan's going to have another affair on Chloe. Blah 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 blah. Like all this stuff, and it, she's literally like going through it, being like, there you go. It's mad. Fucking hell. And does she claim to be a psychic? Like, no, she's, I think she's, I think she, her account is more like, I don't know guys, but I just have a feeling. That kind of I thing. I think it's more celebrity. Once you kind of learn them, you kind of understand what the crack is with them. Right. I, I can't remember her explanation. I remember reading or listening to it. It was very late. Probably at night. She was a bit it. like, it's intuition. And also when you look at the rigmarole of celebrity, this makes sense as to what's she's going to happen. Mathematically kind of calculating this off patterns, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's almost looking at it being like she's it would only Al- make sense if Adam this man Levine's does this. Adam Levine's algorithm yeah. gone. She's looking at that tattoo yeah. going cheater, cheater, <laughs> cheater, cheater. <laughs> cheater. <laughs> she's looking at California going. That bloke is about to have an affair. Anyway, because somebody um, else wrote into the Instagram and was just like, "Did she actually go over and murder him just to fucking prove her point?" 
And I was like, I, 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 it's something that I might do. I it's said, something that I would do. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I can't hundred percent confirm it or I like to be honest with you. <laughs> I just had a feeling now. I've got a pre after this actually. <gasps> Just remind me because it's it's a kind of around this topic, but it's kind of not around this topic. But I can't say it here because I'll be I'm fucking killed. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that. Yeah. Right, it's around like Coolio in Ireland and like a couple of bits and bobs <gasps> and people who are with people and all sort of mad shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Jenny. She got the tea. I got the see. But um, so what was I saying before that? Before I got distracted by this epic tea that I can't spill. <laughs> Just about your one t- prediction there, kind of. Patterns and algorithms. And yeah, but with the Coolio thing, like he was, he loved Ireland. He was always over in Ireland. All these, all these things are coming out now. I know. That's what I said. Sure, he did a, fo- a fucking pub gig in Waterford. He was is that the one for seventeen hundred euro that someone tweeted about? Yeah. And his only thing that he wanted was Grey Goose. He had a rider of Grey Goose, a tray of Sambos, yeah, and uh, a sad. fridge full of water, <laughs> which is a good rider. And he picked like three girls out of it, three like tea. Pre- no, they were teens. They were teens, they and were then they teens. were like, oh, "We don't want to be here," and they let them go. Yeah, put them into there, and then the hotel would let them in. <laughs> they were like, "Get in the van," <laughs> and then they got in the van, got to the hotel, and they were like, "Actually, we're just gonna go back to the queue now." And they were like, "Okay, that's cool." And then he got back to the hotel after the gig, and <laughs> I can just imagine your man in Waterford going, "Don't like to look at them." And so your man who arranged to book the gig for them was like, "We're gonna have to look for another fucking hotel for them," and got them another house. So it was just so. Like you can just imagine it happening, and that's what I said on the stories as well. It was like Coolio did loads of stuff in Ireland over the years. He was on um, <laughs> I can't remember what show it was. I don't know whether it was around the time where they had like this Marty, you know Marty Whelan. Yeah, he was. Oh yeah, he did. <laughs> what was that called? Said, I don't know what that show was. <laughs> he, Marty Whelan had his like hair gels back. It looked nearly like a. Nearly like a music... I don't think it was a talk show, but I think it was like a music-related show. Do you remember Dave Fanning years ago would have had like these like loads of big artists on 2FM and stuff like that? It was nearly that vibe off it. But the, the back, there was no backup dancers or something, so they got like a couple of uh, the, crew, the crew, the film members. crew, and they were like in hoodies doing like dancing. Marty's Open House. Open House, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it was like a like Marty's talk show, but he was like... I don't know why, it just looks like when Marty's down, he has his hair gelled back, it looks like he's trying to be John Travolta. It's a very weird It's a setup. weird time in Ireland. <laughs> very, loads happened in the 90s with him as well, because Gangsta's Paradise was such a big fucking song, and Dangerous Minds, the movie was out, and you know, all this, it was just like, and then the back and dancers, if you can see, if you can look up that clip, so, it's just so fucking cringe. And I was always, I was just saying, every time I saw him on Irish telly, I was just scarlet for us, because I was like, Oh, we are, it, like, we are yeah. so white and he is so cool. <laughs> I was just mortified every time he was there. Cause, and he always just was just like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is brilliant. So Marty tweeted oh, going, geez. ah, Coolio. Because someone found it saying, someone found the clip going, RIP Coolio, never forgot, forget his appearance on Irish daytime chat show Open House, who legend has it booked him by a mistake. <laughs> they hadn't arranged booking da- backing dancers, so he made the middle-aged production crew dress up and do it instead. <laughs> and Marty retweeted that tweet. Yeah. Saying, ah, Coolio, I remember him with great fondness. To have him dancing with the staff was quite the moment, which they did willingly. <laughs> I know the witch, they did willingly, as yeah. if, like, there was no gun to their head. Uh, the very idea of introducing Coolio on afternoon TV shows you how innovative RTA has always been. No, oh, Marty. You just booked him by I don't know. Is that like, is that him being sorry? Oh, absolutely. Like, okay. if he retweeted somebody saying they booked him by mistake, like, he yeah. would have earned that out if it was a lie. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fair. Oh, so I love Who Marty, did, really. I, I want to know who they were Who they thought to book. they were trying to book? Was it like, Cooley Alivo? Or like, what like, was it? Was LL Cool J. Like, who, yeah. who the fuck was it? I don't know. Who did they think they were booking when they got Coolio? Just very or like did they try and book him for like the late late and ended up with him on the day to I don't know anyway like many many things very weird also the clip of him please look it up of him and Big Brother about the t- I forgot he was in BB she was a troll <laughs> <laughs> please look up Coolio Shrek she was a troll <laughs> sake. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, man sorry Carla killed you off now um and I hope uh, I hope his family are okay. Maya Jama. We got him. We got him, guys. Maya Jama for Love Island. 
I, she's been announced. She is stunning. What else does she present? Oh. Did she do? Does she do glow up as well? Is that a thing? She did the. She did the B. She did the UK glow up. I think at one point. Yeah. Everybody, I feel like at this point, has done the UK glow up. She's a very good presenter. She's a great presenter. She started off on kind of football TV. Oh, did she? Yeah, she, she started off doing. I don't feel like because um, like you the way you and um, Tom talk about Maya Jama, I'm like you see a lot of Maya Jama. I don't I see, see a lot of Maya Jama. Is it because Brit TV? Maybe. Yeah. And you're a Brit licker, yeah, I suppose. And I'm yeah. a Brit licker. And as we know, I am a Brit licker. She's younger than, I always think she's my age. She's not. She's only 28. Is she? Yeah. And I feel like because she's been around a million years. Yeah. Yeah. So she's done Glow Up. Um, She's done Soccer Aid. She's done loads of kind of like Celebrity Juice, the Circle, all these other kind of like, she's she seems to be one of those people that's, Always around doing bits and bobs. Mm -hmm. But she started off doing football TV. Lovely. Like a version of football TV. But she is just, oh my God, she is so hot. Yeah, she is. She's And she's a natural at it. Yeah, she's very, like she is just very good. Like when she's strutting into that villa, it won't be cringe. It won't be cringe for her. No, that's what I mean. I'm just, I'm excited. And like, we've gone through this at length. If you look, if you go to our Patreon, we did an episode with Orla Condon. And we talked a lot about hosts and I said, my jamma, my jamma, my jamma. Like, I just couldn't, like, I was like, she's the only one for me. Mm -hmm. um, Orla thought that it was going to be, I can't remember who else, someone at the, AJ, is it AJ? I don't know. I can't remember, AJ, and she had somebody else. But anyway, I was like, for me, it's always been my jamma. Her hat's been in the ring when Caroline Oh, yes, since passed then. Away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her hat was kind of always in the ring, I feel like. Yeah, she's been yeah, she's been mentioned. She's been mentioned a million times. Time. It yeah. would be like if Idris Elba was announced as Bond, she'd be like, Yeah. Yeah, we knew. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, which I don't think is gonna happen. But I'm sure there's a good few of them after being knocked out of the race for that. I don't know what's happening with that. I don't know what's happening with that. No. It's a very it's another thing that doesn't really interest me. Yeah. I don't care who gets it. Yeah, same. We had Pierce Brosnan and it was done for me after that. <laughs> Was absolutely I don't think I've me. watched a Bond film from start to finish to be honest Have you not? No Not even in jest? Not even at Christmas? No what? I just haven't Like I just It's one of those things It's the same uh, and, I, like, and we're still here I'd say I, the last time I probably mentioned this was like a year ago So update Still haven't seen Scarface Still haven't seen The Godfather Still haven't seen uh, any Bond film Haven't watched Harry Potter still Like you know I watched Star Wars, any of them big things still haven't. Is Al Pacino Scarface and Godfather? Al Pacino is definitely Scarface. Godfather? No, uh, it's Scarface, isn't it? Like Scarface is Al Pacino. That's the big that's one. That's definitely, it? yeah. That's all. Let me check. That's, is that Al? Yeah, that's Al Pacino. I watched that. How bizarre. So I was out in Marbella and it was on in this bar on like a projector screen. Okay. But we. It was like me and my friends that were there at the time. And one of the lads, it was like his favorite film ever. So he ended up, we ended up like drinking and actually fully watching it, even though yeah. it was on in the background. And he was like explaining everything. <laughs> and then I remember being like a little like, human <laughs> subtitle. Fuck's I'm sake. hammered. You couldn't really hear the audio. Yeah. It was just the thing. So he was just like explaining the story. So you're going in and out of like drinking, but also watching this, but also I'm in Marbella. And you're hearing it from his perspective. And I'm hearing it from his perspective. And, so, and it was like, he was like, oh, it's my favourite film ever. And he was like, just explaining it to it's us. It's such a fucking cliche favourite film. such a film. large Oh my thing, God. Isn't it? You're like, oh God. So cliche. Yeah. I, no. If you he ask was me, also definitely a bit of a gangster, so it made sense. I, if you ask me what my favourite film is, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't. Actually, what your favourite film yeah, is? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think mine, and when I have, I've got a couple of answers, but I'm like, one that always comes depends to mind. Depends on your mood at the time, I think. I, but I think your favourite film has to be a film that no matter what, you're happy when it comes on, you're happy to sit through and watch the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, you're excited to tell people. It's such a Tinder question, isn't it? it? Is, it's like, what's yeah. your favourite film? But like, Dogma for me, I've said this before, Dogma for me just... I just think one of the funniest, but also well, kind of like, it's an interesting concept for for a comedy film. Right. We got Jane Silent and Bob out of it. Like we got a lot of, like there's a lot of good stuff out of there. You also have to remember like the cast at that time, like it was, it's it's such a blockbuster cast, but yeah. it's also quite obscure. Mm -hmm. Ben Affleck, Matt Damon. Yeah, I like, don't think I've, oh, Chris maybe you Rock, mentioned it. I probably have seen it, but I don't know And Alice Morissette randomly. 
You know, yeah. there's like a ton of really good Salma Hayek. Jack was on the other night. Total Recall. And I'd never What's seen that? it. And Adam was watching it and he was like, I, I've never seen this film. So. I've never seen this film, Jen. <laughs> massive cast. Colin Farrell. Kate Beckinsale. What is this? Hold on. Let me look this up. Jessica Biel. Brian Cranston. Like what? loads of people in it. Now it's a very um what's that? Like few not a few dystopian. It's a very dystopian film. Like there's a colony and it, it's like in the past but also in the future and there's like alien bots that are like they're tr- they call them troops. Are you sure No. That's total recall, Paul. I was about to say, because oh, that's... Is, oh, maybe that was the film that was on after, after it. it. Yeah, and I was this is Arnold this. Schwarzenegger, Sharon uh, Stone. I was like, oh, no, I don't know if this is what you I think it is. I completely fucked this up, Ian. Maybe the, the telly was actually moving so on to the next buster. film. You know, like when you're going through the, the list. And it probably, yeah. told, Recall was probably the next one. Sorry, what is this? Called? Maybe that's why Adam was like, I've never seen this. And he was like, wow, this is weird. <laughs> What is this called? Yeah, Total Recall it is. It's not, I'm literally staring here, Total Recall. Maybe it's a remake. N- 1990, what one's yours? Um, to- oh, 2012, right, yeah. so obviously it's a remake. Oh, I must tell Adam you watched the remake. Oh, he'll hate that. <laughs> he'll fucking hate it's that. Like, because when you said Arnold Schwarzenegger, I was like, yeah, actually. You're like, what? I was totally f- fucking, yeah, because when he was watching this, other, I was like, oh, I didn't know this was ro- Total Recall. It goes to show nobody's there to fucking hold your hand. What can happen? An interesting plot. Yeah, it's very dystopian. Thirty one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <sighs> Not good. Very bad. Actually, let me check what Dogma is on on Rotten Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Um, that one. Sorry, Dogma. I love. And then the other one that I always love is um, Observe and Report. What's that? It's a Seth Rogen film. Seth Rogen, Anna Faris. Again. Oh, right. Okay. An unbelievably Aziz and Zari. Oh God! Like, it's a very funny dark comedy. It's it's is it's, it? Yeah, I'd watch it. I'd watch. Have you not seen it? Give me Jen, bit, please give watch me a it. Bit of a plot. I feel like I've seen a film with Anna Faris, Seth Rogen, and Aziz. So Seth Rogen like. is like a mall cop. I definitely have seen that. Yeah, observe this is and not, report. Yes, if this is not Paul Blart mall cop. I know it's very which like came out it. for some reason around the same time, which I always thought was really strange. So weird. But yeah, no, he's a mall cop, but it's very funny. It's like him and like Anna Faris works in the mall and he's trying to date her. And it's like, there's a criminal I definitely trying to figure did that see out. That, it's, yeah. it's kind of like he thinks that he's, he's trying to kind of half be a police officer. I definitely saw that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, I definitely did. And then like you say, you would mix it up with Paul Blart. Nearly like, because yeah. there was actually a thing out during the week. two mall cop films. Yeah. And you're like, sorry, what? Yeah, they were very um, yeah. similar because I remember during the week Ashton Kutcher came out and he was just like, Do you remember that song or the film uh, No Strings Attached? Yeah, came that out? was, yeah, at the same time as the fucking other Friends one. Friends with Benefits, yeah. yeah. And that he was, was like, stupid. This is funny because like that, them two films came out. And I loved the two of them. I loved the fucking two of them films. No, I can't I hack the one with Justin Timberlake because at that point again, we were trying to give Justin Timberlake a movie career and to me, mm. it didn't add up. It never added up. Yeah, that's true. I always thought he was kind of all right as an actor. But like now when I look back, I'm like, no, he was not all right as an actor. I think at the time you wanted him to be yeah, good as an yeah. actor. I think there was we a big all difference. Still on his side. I think everybody was still like, oh my God, I'm Britney cheating on him. Do you know? I know. <laughs> what a bitch. What a bitch. Good for him now. Yeah, Netflix. I know. Look at him with Cameron Diaz yeah. there. Yeah. Did. Ro- Jesus, Drew, they were together. They were together and then he was it, it was him and Jessica Beale still together. Yeah, yeah. Fuck me. Even though she he got is, stung for I never really looked at Jessica Beale. I always just thought thought her of was she in fucking was it Dawson's Creek or Seventh Heaven or one of them real Yeah, real cookie cutter thing. And I never really looked at Jessica Beale like being anything amazing. Not like I mean like as in acting wise or you know, I I didn't really think she was that um I was just like, fucking hell, she's so random. Like, she just comes out now and again with stuff. And it's just like, oh, hey, there you are again. And then she goes off. But fuck me. When I was watching her on Total Recall, I was like, why is she not in every film? Like, she's... Who, Jessica Biel? Yeah. Oh, I think she's rubbish. Oh, no, she's not. I think she's rubbish. She and, sorry, her and Kate Beckinsale having a scrap. Kate like, Beckinsale I... is one of the most oh, attractive people who can't act. She, but... 
yeah, no, it was really fucking cringe. Seeing her like dip, cannot act. I'm sorry, and, like, cannot act. Adam was like so attractive, can't act. I literally, it was looking at it. I was going, Adam, you need to turn this off. Like these two are turning me on. Yeah, and yeah. You're like, he was like, uh, I'm a when, freaky out here. A, a bit of a, at the end, and I said, no, no spoilers here. But he was just like fucking hell that one. Kate Beckinsale, she's like a poxy Terminator <laughs> in the film. Like she was just like full on. It was like, oh there she is again. Kicking the bollocks out of Colin Farrell. Oh, sure, yeah. here she is. There, yeah. um, they were together for four years. Seems like longer. I could well, come here. If you had have asked me, I would have told you they were still together. Yeah, I was like, they were together 11 years. For some reason, my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they absolutely were not. Um, and everybody thought that they were going to get married and all that other kind of crack. Apparently, they broke up over... They have kids together, do they? No, they don't. What? No, they fucking don't. I hear I'm having a fucking Mandela effect. I could have sworn he just like set up house with her. Who? Who did he, who did I'm he talking about Cameron Diaz now. Oh, sorry. I'm talking about Jessica Biel. No, they're still together. See, that's what I yeah, said. Yeah, no. I mean. But like, remember, there was all this like... Do you remember he released Mirror? And everybody was like, what's your album about? And he was like, basically about the fact that like I kind of... Like I kind of decided I didn't really want to be with my wife anymore at one point. And then... He's like, I wasn't the best husband. It was really weird. I cannot remember verbatim what it was, but it was, I remember being like, this is wait to, to tell Beale. everyone you fucking hate your wife. Yeah. And then he did like mirror and everybody was like, oh, that's it. And he was like, yeah, that's about my wife. But I kind of, I, cause after a point of like me not appreciating her, I got to this point and I'm like, she's like my mirror. Um, really fucking weird. Adds up with all the shit that Brittany has told us though. Yeah. Adds up with all the shit that we now know. About I I do you know what when JT you, with Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel and the way that I see their relationship it was kind of the way I saw Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner like he's just a bit unhinged yeah she's amazing but underappreciated yes that? well I don't I don't know why Jessica Biel and Catherine Heigl those two for some reason for me I'm just like oh get them off my screen really but I can't I can't name one film that Jessica Biel has been in I cannot name one film Total Recall. <laughs> Now I know that it's Total Recall, the remake. <laughs> not even <laughs> yeah. two. Total Recall 2. Not even Total Recall 1. But this is what I mean. I cannot... I couldn't tell you one fucking film she's been in. Yeah. Well, I should have... She's, a, she's another, like, how did you... How how are you an actress? I know, that's what I'm like. She kind of flies under the radar. Yeah. But when you watch her on screen, it's actually just like, I can't look away from you. Really? Oh, yeah. She's very stunning. Yeah, she's very attractive. Yeah, she's absolutely gorgeous. But I just... No, she just has this presence and I'm just like, I want to keep watching you. Yeah. Don't, don't roll the credits now. Keep Jessica Biel on my screen, please. God, do you remember he got Scarlett Johansson in What Goes Around Comes Around video and he tried to make that about Britney as well. I'm just like, this man really... You need to calm down, JT. Yeah, do you remember that? That was very, very fucking... He took his cancelling very seriously. He only came back on uh, TikTok very recently. Good. Yeah. Why was he cancelled again? All the shit that came out about him being like just a fucking weirdo. Oh, really? Yeah, like with the, the Janet Jackson thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody started kind of calling him out on his treatment to Britney. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah. Anyway, they apparently broke up because uh, they had an intense exchange at Prince's Golden Globes after party where Diaz approached Timberlake, who was chatting with Beale. <gasps> oh, shit, I didn't know that. They got an intense 40 minute face off. Fucking hell. Wow. In his 2018 memoir, this motherfucker, Timberlake <laughs> lightly touched on wanting to be with Beale despite being with Diaz. What? Golden Globes came up and that's when we planned on seeing each other. We were both still seeing other people, keeping ourselves safe from getting hurt, from really putting ourselves out there. It took a bit for both of us to admit to ourselves that we were really, really, really into each other. What the genuine fuck? This man, Jesus appa- Christ. apparently it started because he cast Scarlett Johansson in What Goes Around Comes Around. Mm. And I mean, Cameron was never going to get the part. She's not exactly a serious actor. No, but also it wasn't it, like, why are you cast? And anyway, whatever. I get it. It's sometimes I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And other times I'm like, that doesn't make sense. But <clears throat> I think... This more leads to the fact that I'm like, Cameron knew that he had a wander night. No? Yeah, absolutely. Why would you get thick about that? She absolutely knew that. Being an actress, being somebody who's in films, being somebody who has to like kiss and be intimate with other people on screen and... Yeah. You know? 
Oh, he just. He, he, he but that checks himself. out. That's ick, and that checks out. We must read his, his memoir now and do, do a deep dive on him for the Patreon. There you go now. Do that. Really? Yeah. I think that'd be a good one. Yeah? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. Put it on the list. I'm going to write it down. Put it on the list. I'm going to write it down immediately. This was an episode full of uh, fucking tangents, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I like it though. Yeah, it's nice. It's good. It's good towards the end of the month. Well, this would be the very start of October. It's the end of the month for us. And um, yeah, good stuff. Have you got an unpopular opinion? Um, I do. I'm just putting this down on the list. Put it, put it on the fucking you list. You know that me and you have two separate lists. Shit, do we? Yeah. This is the one that I always add to, and you always add to the other one, which is the lame one, the small one. Um, anyway, to- Justin Timberlake's Why have we got two shared lists? I don't know. I think it's because there was, I had a list pre, do you remember I used to have the list and then we made the, the shared folder and we shared the list and it was embarrassing. Main, main TUO. And then mini TUO. Yeah, but if you, if you, if you go into that one. Yeah. That one that I just wrote in. That's Yeah, grand. it has a big Plus, yellow dot beside it now. Yeah, but if you go... Anyway, I'll show you later. This is boring. Nobody wants to hear about this, so... I'll, I'll be honest guys. with you, Carla. I don't add to the list. I haven't added to the list in about a year. That does... You, you <laughs> add... <laughs> unpopular opinion? Oh, unpopular To the list because I do everything fucking else. <laughs> I produce the Foxy episodes. Don't do it well, but I do it. They get out there. Main. That's the main thing. Oh my god, let's not lie, Jen. If I could produce, I'd be fucking doing that too. <laughs> I'm a child. If I'm I, a child. I knew my way around a Mac. <laughs> Which I don't. What's your unpopular opinion, Dick? Come on. I've two. What one do I go for? Thing. What one do I go? I've two, and I don't know which one to go for because one is going to be a long tangent, but I think it's something that has to be brought up, and the other is just like something that I really feel deep within myself. So I'm kind of like, which one do I go for? Well, we have this podcast. You can do the next one another time. You know, two weeks time, you can do another. One. <laughs> two weeks time, I let you. Not that deep, right? I'll Spare do. It. Oh. The haberdashery of outfits at the moment. Is this your deep feeling one or is this the this one? This is one that's more yeah. of a tangent. Okay, yeah. yeah. Grand. The haberdashery of outfits at the moment has to stop. Are you talking about girls wearing trousers as overcoats? And, but the problem is so the, the, root, the root of the problem here is the accessory is you're skinny. Yeah. There is no other, like, it's this kind of thing where I don't know if people think that they're in their, like, Carrie Bradshaw era, but it's like, and it was, it's a, it's a, I'll put it up on our Instagram because it was a video that Rita Ora put up, shockingly enough. I found her fucking TikTok. It's a dark place. (gasps) But it was like her... And it's set, and it's like her, and she's like, "Oh, this is like my fit or whatever." But like now, she's kind of got a New Zealand accent as well, which is oh, very has interesting. She? Which yeah. is very interesting. Okay. Um, but it's like her, and she like essentially puts on. So she's like a tank top on with no bra, which is like the accessory. Yeah. And it's like one of those old school kind of like Ed Hardy ish kind of you know one of those that it's like it's all it's so tacky it's cool yeah you know like this little skirt clogs. Okay. Then she bangs on like necklaces, throws on an army hoodie and a bucket hat. And I was like, just fucking stop. Like, just stop. <laughs> We're going back into this place where people are re they're they're redigging up 90s culture, but to a point now where it's kind of, do we remember how toxic the 90s were, particularly about body image? Yeah. Look what's happening with the Kardashians. They're after all going fucking svelte, super, super, super thin. Yeah. And it's like, we're going back to this place where it's like, heroin chic is like, and people are slapping on these outfits. And it's not that deep, but it's more the fact that I'm like, I'm sorry, that's just not fashion. Like, that's just not style. That's you being slim Mm. and throwing on shit and being like, yeah, savage. Because I guarantee you, if somebody of a, that was not straight sized, that put this on, or wasn't yeah. 100% aesthetically what like aesthetically 
what you deem to be what like you deem acceptable. to be acceptable and per and whatever they, they, this would not be even this wouldn't be a thing this would be a video that went viral for people taking the piss but didn't you say and it would have been in our first year during the podcast there's a massive difference between being trendy and being stylish and yeah. this is a trend and this is a trend and it's just kind of but you know when you're at a point where you're like i'm now seeing of course yeah the old Irish influencers are seen tapping into this and I'm like guys we really it, yeah. I need to stop you here before you go on a roll as well it's coming into October cop on it's fucking cold and I know exactly what you're talking about because I watched this I don't know whether it was there's two accounts that particularly do this I feel like you're one um, that I'm about to mention copied off Celeste Barber you know yeah. the, so Celeste yeah. Barber if you don't know who she is she puts out so you'll have like this Again, very slim, athletic model, model doing some obscure, mad fucking dance, the cha cha, a dive, a pose, whatever she is doing, or like playing tennis in her fucking shower, it, whatever she's doing on the camera, and then it'll switch to Celeste doing it. Now Celeste is just has a normal body. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Does she have kids? Or she does, she does yeah. have kids. So like you know, post part like she's had like I think she has grown kids, but she's not like. She like she has cellulite. She has you know she's a normal fucking person, a regular normal person, and she does the exact same thing as what the model does, but obviously doesn't have the like you know the athletic mobility. Yeah. So like she's a bit more awkward. She's a bit more stiff, and it's kind of taking the piss out of the fact that like no, you can't. This can't be obtained. You, yeah. you need to be. So there's another one called um, Knee Deep in Life, and she does kind of something similar. I yeah. think she she kind of got famous by. Well, not famous, but she went viral initially by getting stuck in a pair of spanks. She put on a pair of spanks and, like, they rolled up on her and she oh, couldn't get out with them. Oh, it was very funny. But um, she does the same thing now. She'll, like, put a video of somebody doing something and then she'll come in and do her own yeah. version of it. But this week in particular, she did that. There was a, a video of a girl and she had put on, it was like this bralette. That your one put the bralette on and you oh, as I a saw skirt. This, I saw that and I was and just like, get me fucking out of here. Two like. bralettes, put it on diagonally, crisscross them, close them. So it, it looked like this. So now you have four bralettes now on. Now you have four <laughs> bralettes on and none of them are being worn the way they were intended. <coughs> and then she gets a pair of fucking baggy, carky, tri- like cargo. Carky. Carky, not carky, cargo. Um, trousers and puts it on as a fucking, fucking jacket. jacket. Yeah, I saw this as well, and I'm like, this is this is where I'm like, we're getting back to this point. And again, I'd love to go deeper into it, but we're running out of time. We're getting back to this point where it's like, this is the accessory is being thin. Like we can we can sh- yeah do it up and do it down, whatever. And it's it's also really upsetting in a time where Kim Kardashian single handedly fucking changed the way that body image is perceived. Yeah. That they are now going to this place of like super thin, I know. getting out their BBLs of this kind of like really, really, really kind of very slim slender physique and again now everybody's kind of rushing to obtain that Mm. like everybody knows how toxic the 90s were Mm. for everyone's body image if you were thin if you were if you were fat if you were anything yeah it was it was bad for all of us because it was at this point where this was what was perpetuated by the media Mm. so if we're gonna go and do this again and i see it a lot like there's a lot of reels that i see and it's like Hailey bieber style but on a fat girl and yeah. they're like, do the outfit. And it looks fucking fab. But the comments are shit. Like, the comments are a shit show. Yeah. And you're like, what is... what? Like, we're getting to a point now where when you stare at something enough, I can't even begin to express. The, per, like, body image and perception was created by the media. This wasn't created by us and it's just like a standard of life. Mm. No, this is what the media shoved into our faces and shoved in our throats. They made so much so that we believed it and so much yeah. so that we've kind of like been influenced it by it. If they made size zero <clears throat> famous. And that's like, what like, I mean. I'm like, that's, the, it was never, it was never about what actually is, you know, when you see people being like, but health and, and uh, BMI and blah, blah, blah. No, fuck that. Like, mm. said it a million times. I have to say it again. If we all ate the same fucking diet, we'd still have different bodies. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so sorry to the people that really can't get that concept into their brain. But if we all ate the exact same diet, we would all still have different bodies. Exactly. So you being able to turn around and go, no, it should be this way or that way or X or Y or whatever. It's just, I, I see it creeping in. And with the outfit thing, I was like, this is just another, mm. such an obvious out there example of if anybody who isn't conventionally attractive or seen in, again, not even conventionally attractive because they are, but seen in the media's eye mm. by popular opinion 
conventionally attractive this would be a different reception yeah definitely and it's like and we're creeping back into that place and it's getting it's getting very very dodge and very very scary it is you're dead right you're so dead, right? just saying that i have my stomper you have your stomper will i play the jingle are play you ready the jingle Carlos, stomper of the week so um Lindsay hamilton introduced me to this duo um they're both they're both separate artists but they date all right they're both irish oh um but i think they've been signed recently by like a uk agency like i don't know if they're making the the move or whatever but Lindsay was kind of just half telling me about it because we were talking about fucking shy irish music and (laughs) and she was like there's some really good stuff out there that just doesn't get the yeah you know like we're still like there's still people out there making like 90s hits yeah. And being like, and getting celebrated quite largely yeah, in, our, in yeah. Irish music. And there's actually some good people out there. So the song is called Where You At. It's by my, it's by Monjola and Abby um, Koulibaly. And it's a really like, the, sorry, the video as well is like savage. Okay. But it's really well produced. You don't even call for me. Do you really love Watch the video. Ready? Oh, I like that. It's just honestly, the video is shot all around Dublin, and it do, it looks like LA. Do you oh, know? Really? It's like I, like they're in Hoth, and it looks fucking savage. Like everything about it, I was like, oh, like Lindsay was like, look at this, like look at this, yeah. look at this. I'll link it in the description below. Yeah, but um, the video is like really high production. It just, I was like, this is like the stuff that no one hears about. Yeah, no, I'd never heard of it. I'm like, no one, like no one ever. Yeah. You know? I was actually listening yesterday <clears throat> to, uh, obviously an Irish station. And it was like, um, I love when uh, Irish stations are just like, look at us playing Irish artists. Aren't we fucking great? And you always know what Irish artists they are. No, like, not even that. No, it's not. No, it wasn't. To be fair, it was Erica Cody. And I was like, are they, are they patting themselves on the back? I was just like, they would not play this without that fucking jingle before. They'd never play it. They wouldn't just play it like in their rotation. In their rotation. Yeah. Or like overplay it the way they do with fucking uh, any of the other heads. Like they wouldn't Dare do it. it. They always have to play the jingle <clears> where <throat> Erica Cody is like, hi, this is Erica Cody and this is my select Irish track for, you know, and then, and it's just like, look at us. Look what we're playing. Look what we're doing. They'd never play it without that fucking jingle before. Interesting. It's me off. Yeah? Yeah. Dead right. Damn. Anyway, anyway yeah. we're going to go and record our Patreon now. We're stuck for time because you're going for brunch today, aren't you? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a friend over from the States. You've got I've a brunch. Tight fucking schedule. Yeah, lovely stuff. Right, well, we hope you enjoy. Um, we'll talk to you next week. We love you very much. Bye. Bye.